What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing you this week's Patch Notes recap video. Um, it's just a short aside, I'm gonna tweak the audio a little bit because it is absolutely pouring rain uh, where I am now and it makes sound. Hopefully the mic's not picking it up. Um, I, there's a little tool thing I'm gonna try and use to make sure that it doesn't pick up in the in the video much, but we'll see how it goes. If you do hear a little bit of rain noise in the background, I apologize. Unfortunately, I can't yet control the weather, but I'm working on it. So anyways, we'll jump in and check out the patch notes this week. Uh, a lot of it is on another Node Wars revamp. So just like the last time they did this, I don't, I'm not gonna get too into it because that, that would again make the video like ultra long. So I'm gonna read over it some more later and then probably put out a video on Friday, a couple days from now specifically for the node war changes and what to expect with that coming up the node war changes do start next week uh so there's that to keep in mind as well and it's going hand in hand with the new guild alliance system that's been added so now you can combine separate guilds into an alliance to have up to 100 people to help in conquest and node wars as well and they've revamped how it works but again i'm just going to gloss over it for this video if uh once i do the video on the node wars uh in a day or two i'll link to it in the description so if you're listening to this on wednesday thursday or early friday it's not there yet. If you are listening to this late Friday or sometime this weekend, guess what? It's in the description below, so feel free to click on that. Anyways, let's uh, let's see what else is going on. And be honest, there's not a whole ton outside of uh, the Node Wars because they're really focused on that. First thing, we have this BDO Remastered Festival. I got the tab open for that here. It's pretty simple what it is. They gave everybody a new title, a limited 30-day title from today uh, that just says hashtag BDO Remastered. So basically what you need to do is jump on Twitter or some business like that uh, and post a screenshot. Uh, let's see, videos, music, or other content related to remastered Black Desert on social media. You can use Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, or any other social media platforms. Somebody please send out something from like a un completely unheard of like social media platform and then like have to submit a ticket for it. Anyway, uh, you include the hashtag BDO remastered in your post and then you're entered for it. And basically you're going to get, uh, once it hits 100,000 people, it will hit 100,000 people. Um, that's globally. All adventures are going to get an enhancement help kit too. We don't know what's in that. It's not obviously they're not listing it, but I'm willing to bet it's going to be something like black stones, maybe some sharps or hards, or most likely some Valk's cry and possibly some cron stones since those just uh, got some updated usage in this past week. Then aside from that, if you are a streamer, you probably don't listen to my channel anyway because uh, you're busy doing your own stuff. But if you are and you stream with the hashtag BDO remaster, has to be the first thing in your title, I guess. Uh, and then post it up on the forum or whatever, then you're going to get some free stuff here, which is not too bad. Free value pack's always good, and so is the blessing of Kama So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then, I guess, apply to become a partner. Uh, all right, I don't know why it's on there. I guess if you're a streamer and that's, like, your thing, check it out. Um, we probably wouldn't be accepted, so we ain't worried about that one. On to the next thing. Yeah, there you go. Use a special title. Click to where we just looked at for the event details. The end on that. Uh, they refreshed attendance rewards. So there's that. It now has Ancient Spirit Dust in it as well. Uh, ongoing events. Still got the Hands of Gold where they're just giving us free Shikatu boxes. Still got Late Summer Night's Dream where they're giving us basically free Shikatu boxes. The Valks are still running. Oh, I forgot Black Spirit Adventures. I haven't done Black Spirit Adventure since like Saturday probably. Yeah, completely. Well, there you go. Better, better get my free stuff again. I do need all those Whale Tendon potions. Uh, Guild Alliance has been added. Uh, it, they, they talk about this ad nauseum in here, and I guess it, I'm probably going to break it down in the Node Wars, but essentially it's literally what I just said. You can have a maximum of 10 guilds or 100 members, minimum of 10 members, and maximum of 90 members are required of guilds seeking to join an alliance, and this guild alliance can participate in Node and Conquest Wards. Guilds who are ocu already occupying a node or territory cannot join the alliance, so you have to not have one be, under, be one that you're working on. Founding guild of the guild alliance becomes the supreme guild, and the guild master of the supreme guild can create the guild alliance using the guild tab. They really called him the supreme guild master. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think Kim Jong-un made this uh, patch note. Uh, the founding guild master of the Supreme Guild has to create a new name for the guild alliance. Afterwards, the founding guild master can click on the add guild icon to register guild names, capacity, distribution. Yeah. Then clicking on alliance invitation will send invitations to relevant. Uh, Supreme Guild can register guild alliance emblem after purchasing that exact thing on Monday. The guild alliance emblem and name will only be exposed during the Notre Conquest War. And upon occupation of the Notre Territory, the guild alliance emblem and name will be placed and displayed. Just differentiating that, you know, it was a guild alliance versus, I guess, just a guild, but... Yeah, Supreme Guild. 
Wow. Invitations can be sent to the guild masters logged on to the same server to join the guild alliance. When sending the invitation, the tax distribution ratio must be total at 100% in order for the guild alliance to be formed. Supreme Guild, upon sending invitations, has to place quota on each guild to fill in the required number of guild members joining the guild alliance. Supreme Guild cannot request quota on the number of guild members lower than the current number of the guild. This means if the guild has invited 30 members currently, you can request that that guild to provide 30 or more members to join the guild alliance. That's kind of a weird way to do that, isn't it, huh? Guilds that accept the invite to join the Guild Alliance while under the Guild Alliance affiliation cannot accept new registrations to their guild above the quota they have been given to fill. Interesting. Take a look at the examples below. You literally just gave us an example. I think we're okay. Uh, if the Guildmaster disconnects or changes servers, when having received the invitation to the Guild Alliance, the invitation will disappear. All invited guilds must accept the invitation for that Guild Alliance to be formed. In order to send another invitation, Guildmaster of the Supreme Guild can cancel the current one and then resend the invitation. Guild Alliance will be disbanded if one of the guilds leaves also interesting however it is not possible to disband from an alliance while a node or territory is being occupied hmm okay guild members of guilds under guild alliance cannot apply for militia guilds with guild members applying for the militia cannot join the guild alliance for node and conquest war construction fort command post field headquarter is only allowed by guild master or guild officer of the supreme guild and annexes can be constructed by any member of rank quartermaster or higher of each guild when a siege building is purchased guild funds from each guild will be used very, very interesting. This will be cool. Um, we'll, we'll go into more depth with this in the uh, Node War update thing later on here. Savage Rift's been updated. They had that Savage Rift event thing that has now ended. So what they've done is the Conquer Savage Rift end is over. So the special 26 stage that was available with a 50% has ended. But they decided to go ahead and add it permanently. <coughs> Excuse me. Decided to add it permanently with a 40% chance to open up, and the 26th stage will open at 100% if Sonal appears. Make sure you are fully prepared for the 26th stage, as it'll be very difficult to overcome. Okay, Ogre Ring's been added to the loot list of the Savage Rift box that can be obtained upon successfully protecting the Sealed Tower in the 26th stage, that's cool. It's been added that hitting Cyclops with the Savage Lynch Cannon would apply stun at 50% chance. Knockback resistance is increased for monsters in Savage Rift. Installation time for the following is decreased. Barricade, Watcha, Flame Tower, and Iron Barricade. I'll be honest, I've done limited Savage Rift, and the event didn't really make me go back to it. Maybe if you're a newer player, like, grinding wasn't efficient for you, so this was probably a pretty good way to make some extra cash. But, I don't know, man. This isn't going to get me to go play a mini game within it, like... It's just too long. I know they trimmed it back so that it's like 15, 20 minutes now or whatever, but it's still like, I don't know. And the, oh, it does say the time required to protect 1 through 25 uh, was decreased by 4 minutes. So I get that they, they're trying to make it faster, which you have to because it's too time consuming and you could just like kill dudes in that time frame and be way ahead. But yeah. Combat EXP obtainable using Book of Training Combat has been increased for the following level caps. Uh, if you are 60, going to 62... Or, excuse me, 61 going to 62, it's increased by 2.5. If you're 62 going to 63, it's by 2. If you're 63 to, to 64, which I believe there's only one guy that I know of, maybe there's a handful. I believe just one guy is at 63. It's 1.5 and then 64. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, advanced notice. No rules will be changed with next week's September 12th maintenance. Like I said, they... There, th we'll go over this. Here's here's all the cool stuff. There's a chart in it. If you want to check it out before the video's out, obviously here's that. I'll have the link to this the patch notes below, so you can see it. But yeah, it's different. It's not groundbreaking or anything. But anyways, yeah, we'll check this out in a, in a following video, so we don't spend you know 30 minutes just on how the node tiers and stuff are gonna work and the new list and all that. But yeah, it, it's, keep, it's we're still scrolling. We'd be on this forever. And. Total notes. That's cool. Anyways, system updates. Here we go. Controls on swimming has been made more convenient. Navigation will now be available by pressing the T key as you would perform auto run on the ground. You can press the T key to perform auto swim. When navigation is activated, press T key to automatically swim to your destination. If your stamina is over 300, press the shift key to swim faster. If your stamina is below 100, pressing T key to auto swim will only activate the motion to recover stamina, and your character will start swimming again if the stamina recovers to over 1,000. Auto swim can only be performed on the surface of the water, and if you have dived down, you cannot perform auto swim. I'm being honest with them. I said like stamina recovers to over 1,000. I almost like a, made a really sweet cringe joke because you know Vegeta and the over 9,000 thing, but it was I, it was like a layup joke and probably terrible. So I just let it. I let it go. Anyways, changing directions has ma been made easier when swimming and diving. It'll now be possible to move backwards diagonally. The character will react faster to the directional arrow input of your control keys to allow you to dive up or dive down 
while diving have been added. While having pressed the forward key W, press E to dive up. While having pressed the forward key W, press Q to dive down. Stamina has been increased by 50% of when the character takes stamina recovery motion. If stamina is below 100 while floating on the surface of the water, character will now take the stamina recovery motion automatically. It's been fixed that the sound effect that comes out for a success or failure of course or awakening would come out correctly. Oh, they just jammed that in after, <laughs> hey, controls of swimming are more convenient. And then they're like, all that. And then, oh, by the way, the sound effect for course or awakening, that could have been broken up better. Fix an issue of character perform walking motion in a river. Fix an issue of the crown mark of a guild. Conquered Valencia would come out in a silver color. It's been changed at the selling price of the best year sub weapon would not be displayed in its item tooltip. Fix the issue where reconnecting to the game after being disconnected from the client during an action regarding world map would intermittently bring up the world map again, but no control keys would work on the world map. Busking music near Marketplace in Velio and the square in front of Heidel Fountain will now be controlled properly. Oh, thank goodness. I was waiting on that. Uh, game world changes, some graphic fix, 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 fix. Navigation's been improved near Castle Wall at Cron Castle. We'll see, fix, 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 fix. Fix issue the character got stuck and couldn't escape after falling down from a spot near Grana 6. Fix, fix, okay. NPC fixes, mounts, doo -doo -doo -doo. it's been changed. That changing the direction and moving the fishing boat would be would both be possible at the same time when the fishing boat was stationary. It's been it's, it has been changed, the changing directions Hmm, interesting it's English. It has been changed. The changing directions would be possible. It's supposed to be that. Okay, I got it. It's been changed. That changing directions would be possible when moving the fishing boat backward. Fix the issue where movement would stop by pressing S key while the fishing boat was on the move. It's been changed that the sh that when the ship's sail would become transparent, it would appear slightly darker. Fo the following system messages will now be displayed when clicking on the ship icon, and the ship will be unavailable or too far away. You're either too far away from the ship or the ship is not usable. Fix the character performing the carrying motion to load trade items on the character's back could board onto the wheel of the galley sailboat frigate and old bartali sailboat motion blur that occurred during sprinting on a horse has been mitigated class changes this is interesting and i did see on the forums was it on the forums or twitter can't remember but i did see somewhere that people were having issues with gathering i too i was uh grinding a little bit at work before i got to go through the patch notes I also saw some weird things. Let me read this to you first and I'll tell you what I experienced. Maximum input of key commands in a certain period of time has been set in order to fix the issue of character skill combos being activated at different rates, depending on how fast a key command is inputted on a keyboard or how good a computer's hardware performance is. Eventually, it may be possible that the amount of milk obtainable at once from a milk a cow minigame may be less than before with certain high-end PCs, and as a result, the amount of milk that can be obtained once has been increased by approximately 50%. Okay. So, I don't entirely know what issue they were talking about before of character skill combos being activated at different rates, depending on how fast a key command is inputted. All I can tell you is today, while I was out killing some bros, doing some quests and stuff, trying to get them coffer stones, uh, I definitely just had instances where, like, I couldn't use, like, my skill wouldn't work for a solid second or two, and then it would do it. And I actually, I had read this note this morning completely forgot about it and I was literally like man is something up with my mouse I was like trying to uh, W and right click uh, Dark Knights like for a dash thing I'm like trying to do that a couple times too and I'm just like well why I'm doing nothing and then like a couple seconds later starts working I literally swapped out mice and was just like it must be this garbage mouse must be that and it was still doing it and then I'm like man what is going on and then I was looking around and tons of people were saying like gathering was a huge issue they'd hit R somebody was saying like mounting their horse based on what keys they were pressing beforehand they were having issues mounting their horse up and down so I don't know about all this but hopefully they fix that it, it wasn't like a big deal but it was like you know a couple seconds of like why am I not attacking right now so that was interesting some graphic fixes with a bunch of helmets on everything um nothing Crazy text fixes on Ninja and a couple on Kuno and more graphic fixes all the way down. Absolutely no balancing. As I've said before, we're, I think we're completely past actual character changes at this point. Some item changes. Let's see. Portofria Wharf Manager Skrulk is now offering... Did I read that right? Srulk will now offer the following addition in his Amity shop. The Srulk's Humble Fishing Boat. Uh, Magic Crystal of Infinity. Critical has been renamed to Magical Crystal of Infinity. Critical hit. Okay. Sweet update. And they changed the text on it as well. Text on critical hits been changed on everything. And crafting methods of obtaining the following have been added to the costume mill. Uh, a bunch of lawn costume stuff, the craftable stuff. Oil for the lantern will no longer be offered in the play every day thing. Yeah, they said they were going to do that. Tannis Fire Firefly will now be sold from Jensen, the general goods vendor. So now we can all go from never, never using lanterns to never using these fireflies. So that's cool. 
It's been fixed that the same pearl item cannot be placed into set creator if it is already in one of the slots. And the following items will now be able to be sold in shops. Uh, Mystic costume, striker costumes, everybody's black leopard costume, everybody's shroud knight costume, termian costumes, and a bunch of dark knight costumes. There you go. Outfit extraction will not be available for temporary items with day limits. For example, the Crown Eagle armor 15 days. You can't extract those. I'm curious because I didn't try it, but could you have done that before this update? Was that actually possible to get Cron Stones and stuff from them? Would have been nice to know. I didn't even try it. It didn't cross my mind. That's not true. It did cross my mind for half a second, and I literally just thought, like, no, that doesn't make any sense. But I wonder if it did work up until now. Now I'll never know. Um, we'll check out the Pearl Shop in just a second. Uh, monster changes. The drop rate of the Blackstone armor from the Falling Monsters of Navarre and Steppe has been increased by 30%. It's Griffin, King Griffin, and Black Leopard, so there's that. And the Leopard Fang items will be obtainable at max to each. Text abbreviations, blah, 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 blah. Quest and knowledge updates. Um, there's new story quests to get you access to Achman and Histria so that you can go in instantly. So you get to do those and you can just go there if you farm there instead of chasing down portals all the time. So that's definitely going to save some people a whole lot of time if you are farming there. So there's that. Uh, quest description fix. Fix the issue where the prancing lamb would go through a wall. Okay. Fix the awkward dialogues of NPC. Issue fix, fix, fix it. Typo, typo, typo. Uh, Rulipi has finally completed preparing the surprise reward for adventurers who complete all of the Rulipi travel quests. Upon completion of the final quest, back to the daily routine, the end. You can receive Eden or Orwell's travel wear box through the quest Gift of Memories offered by Rulipi. We don't know what's in it. I've heard it's good stuff and worth, worth doing. So, yeah, we'll be doing that um, possibly on stream, but at a minimum on a video. It's just a quest chain. It's not like it's anything, but yeah. So, look forward to that. It's been improved. Navigation would lead to the shortest way during the consecutive quests of the weird devices. Camera perspective fix. Lantern's been removed from the following quest because lanterns are gone. Quest completion. Location's been changed for Village of Foggy Lights. Glish quest. Lanterns as the reward and content of the quest. Tiny. Yeah, they took. We get it. You took the lanterns out of the quest rewards. No problem. We understand there's no more lanterns. Interface changes, text fix, let's see, interface size at 100% would not be saved in settings. Lantern item has been removed. <laughs> I swear, if there's another line about this, lan we know the lantern's not in the game anymore. Got it. Thank you, guys. Uh, system message tells you to brighten up or darken. Lantern's been changed to, oh, jeez. I literally just said it, and then I read another line about the lantern. Okay, okay. All right, we're scrolling past that. Fix some issue, the camera perspectives are awkward. Blah, blah, blah. Fix it, fix it, fix it. It's kind of just like them going back on things that might have been an issue after like their remastered mode. And then they're really paying attention to graphical interface and lanterns all over the place. Uh, current known issues. We're aware of the issue where time passed for the playtime for the day is not showing up properly. So they're going to fix that soon. Aware of the intermittent issue where a wagon cannot complete transport. Looking into resolving the issue right away for the time being. Please retry transport after changing servers. If your transport is stalled for a long time, your transport cannot be completed. Hmm, interesting. Aware of the issue where the passenger on the backseat of the guild elephant could inflict abnormal amount of damage. We are looking to resolve the issue right away. We want to ask you for your patience as we will be restricting some of the skills available while on mount of the guild elephant. We apologize for the inconvenience. That's potentially huge. Uh, where where the issue where the shadows look awkward when display quality and settings is set at low, very low levels are optimal and remaster mode will resolve this soon. And yeah, whatever. Where the uh, intermittent delay in key input and interact keys. Oh, here's just exactly what we were talking about. We'll look into the issue right away. What do you mean we will look into the issue right away? You already knew this was a problem. Why did you bother doing the other... T whatever. Oh, there you, there you go. So they already know about it. So, yeah, sweet. Um, oh, I, I was just... We have confirmed that after the maintenance of 29 August, it was possible for Cronestowns and Valkstones to be... Crack, Valks cry, sorry. To be extracted from the Lawn Lar Arcean 15-day outfits. We initially blocked the use of these items to prevent abuse. We've now corrected the issue and restored the use of... Lawn Lar Arsian items. We've removed the silver gains from adventurers who have extracted the items. The amount that was taken away was the relevant items marketplace value in silver. The extracted Lar Arsian outfit has also been restored and sent via in-game mail. Those adventurers who cannot enjoy their item due to this will receive a new set via in-game mail. Okay, so there was the answer to my question. I guess it worked on specifically this one, but they reverted it anyway, so... Too bad. I'm glad I didn't do it. Uh, Pearl Shot updates. We got the rookie pack, uh, premium and the regular rookie packs are back. Those come around every once in a while. So, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff in it. If you're new, it's 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 not super great or amazing or anything you have to have. But uh, the value for it's not bad since you have to get pets anyways. And obviously, weight limit when you're a new character is relevant. Uh, the same old monster pack thing they have every once in a while. Those things are back. This outfit look, looks pretty dope, if I'm being honest. This Sork outfit right here. That's pretty cool. This one too, I like the striker outfit looks pretty cool too. 
I'm a fan of those. I, it's been a while since I've seen an outfit where I'm like, yo, this one. Most of them are just like, hey, boobies. Uh, some earrings, whatever. Okay. And if you care about furniture because you are a house guy, there's that. Check that out. So that is all of the patch notes that we got. Uh, that is going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video. If you want to catch more of our stuff coming out, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get updates for when new videos go out. And yeah, I do have a guide I've been putting together for farming Kafra stones when you are below soft cap gear, relatively below soft cap gear. So yeah, I've got a fairly efficient method for uh, farming those through grinding. Um, so maybe working on that this weekend for you guys and put that out. So that's definitely worth subscribing to to check out. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's going to be it. I am not the worst. Thanks, for everybody. Thank you for watching. Take care. We will see you next time. Hey.